And you didn't think I'd make any money. I found a dollar while I was waiting for the bus. While you were out earning that dollar, you lost $40 by not going to work. The plant called and said, if you don't come in tomorrow, don't bother coming in Monday. Woohoo! A four-day weekend. Hey, let's go, Wayne Brady. Hey, knock, knock, everybody's running in the wood. They get so crazy, people work so hard. There's no time to be lazy. They say, hey, 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 Whoa. I used to make a lot of weird decisions on this channel. Shit, I still do. One of those things I did was, for like a year or two, I did non-stop videos on random Disney cartoons. Not even in any particular order. Then I did it again in 2019, I guess. Only a few of them have survived the great purge of me getting rid of those videos that I'm either not proud of or just make me really uncomfortable. And one of those was that Weekenders video, man. Why? I, I don't know, nigga. I forgot that shit was up there to keep a G with you. I even got the year that the show came out wrong in the fucking title. Why the fuck did y'all watch this bullshit? If it was up to me, all of these bitches would be gone. Bye bye, how to black. The Weekenders was an animated series produced by Disney TVA that ran from 2000 to 2004 about the adventures of four friends Tino, Lore, Carver, and Tish. Running for four seasons, it became the show that killed Pokemon, according to TV Guide. <laughs> Yeah, okay, here, go ahead, baby, log in. Pokemon! I always felt like The Weekenders was one of those shows that deserved a proper revisit from me. Black slang words, random references to Tupac, jokes I'll have to apologize for in the pinned comments in a few years, and full of unnecessarily loud hip-hop music. All the rap music that was going on while he... Sometimes you couldn't even think. I didn't know what the hell I was doing back then. That video, that video doesn't count. That was back before I watched every episode of the show before talking about it. A practice that these two bum ass niggas laughed me out the room for when I first told them about it. Shows what they know, I'm the one, okay, with the plush toy. Ah ha ha, fuck out of here, niggas. Ah, suck my dick from the brat. Hey, it's your boy D Dub Man here, telling you guys a tale. Oh, about no, a no, oh, oh, no, 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 take this shit down, yeah, nephew. Is it time for the theme song yet? Oh, no, no, baby. This is a series review right here. We doing it big this time. You edited two AMVs and didn't mentally work out the placement, didn't you? You know, you might be the reason why everybody talks to me like I'm pussy. Press show with a bed for pre rolls, no fit in the crowd for free. You mean a lot to us, but we wanted to give you the best weekend ever. Everyone will forget who is best smile and best hair by next year. The best friend is forever. Ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Tino, Lore, Carver, Tish, the Weekenders. Hey, this title sucks. What the fuck is a Weekender? Uh, at some point, I uh, like got an offer for the Weekenders, and I was like, "What's the Weekenders?" Someone we still don't know whom had just arbitrarily called it the Weekenders and written it on a piece of paper when they made the offer and that wound up being the name of the show to this day no one knows where the title of the show came from all we know is that michael eisner said i love the show the only thing i don't like is the title the title is terrible and we were like we'll change it and then we never changed it this is doug langdale he's responsible for creating this show project geeker and dave the barbarian Oops. Oh damn, I said the quiet part loud and the loud part quiet. quiet. Oh dear. Every episode takes place over the course of the weekend, typically starting on Friday or Saturday, depending on what kind of story it is. And the characters usually always learn a lesson by Sunday. And you know, maybe it'll like bleed into Monday a little bit sometimes too. Right off the bat, you understand that the draw of the show is definitely a friendship between the main four characters. No high concepts, not even anything particularly extravagant going on. If I made Jock a word that y'all been using ever since I said I was gonna do this show, it's pretty cozy, it's like comfy. A real laid back chill vibe. Which, I need it, you know? Charlie Brown and them was just doing magic and stuff last time. Approach with extreme caution. Tish? 
Yup, intro clip. There it is. Got one. So Tino's our main character that we follow, especially in the first season. My man gets on his door with an E and typically addresses the audience and lets them know the setup for every episode. So I am super excited because it's Friday and my mom's having her Vernal Equinox party. I know, Vernal Equinox sounds like some kind of protein drink, but it's one of two days every year when day and night are the same length. Because every year I get a party and like a total top shelf present. It's like Christmas, only warmer, and there's no TV specials. Fam, I love all of these characters, but... Boy, did I get attached to Tino. He's really anxious, clumsy, overzealous, and relentlessly sarcastic. I admire that he has his own very clear, bold character traits and wasn't just made to be a blank slate for the audience to assert themselves as. He's played by Jason Marsden, who smokes it. You can definitely hear a little Max goof pop out when he lets it. Oh, yup, think again. My best friend's gone because of you and your stupid racism. I hate you. <laughs> Yo, never fails, my nigga. Ooh. I'm very disappointed in you. <laughs> okay, what's up? How do you know something's up? Oh, it just seems like you always have some kind of problem by Saturday night. Tino gets a lot of his advice for how to deal with his friend's issues from his mom, Dukes, who... Does she, uh... Does she have a name? I watched this whole show, and I can't remember if she gets a first name. Hold on, let me fucking see this shit. She does not. Nice. Nice. I think it was in that Ginger video. I'm quoted in saying that the best animated moms are a toss up between Ginger's moms and Tino's moms. And I stand by that. And, okay. By best mom, I'm not calling them the hottest, you fucking weirdos. And if I was, my answer would have to be Donna. Otherwise, I am anti black. Yeah, so like, okay. Um, Tino's mom is the best and all. Like, she's great. Uh, But she be borderline feeding this nigga dog shit, son. Somebody should call. Child Protective Services. Let's go, guys. Yeah, before we find out what the bream in bream cheese is. Well, actually, bream is a typo. No, 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 one thing they do with Tino and his moms that I really appreciate is that they don't shy away from the fact that Tino's dad isn't around anymore. And it's not even like a death thing. It's a full divorce, which is handled so believably. So that it's believable? Ah, whatever, who cares? Raising a kid is already impossible. You finna tell me that she gotta do this shit by herself? Sometimes we think someone would be perfect if only we could change one thing about them. But when we change that one thing, suddenly they're not the person we knew. Yeah, okay. Then before you know it, you're divorced and raising a child all on your own. This isn't about Laura anymore, is it? Man, there's this really great episode in the second season where Tino's mom goes on a date with this guy, Dixon, that Tino and his friends really like. And it does a lot of things really well, but one thing I really like about it is the conversation Tino has with his mom. In just 30 seconds, they address so much in such a mature way, man. This shit was really dope to see when I got to this one. Tino, I know you want Dixon and me to like each other. Mom, I promise I won't mess with your social life anymore. Well, it's not that. I'm just worried that it's hard for you, being the only one of your friends who doesn't have a father at home. I don't know. I don't remember what it was like with dad around. Anyway, what are you gonna do? Marry some guy just so I have a dad? <laughs> yeah, right. Mom, I think we'll be just fine the way we are. Yeah, we probably will be. Although I understand Dixon makes a very comfortable living. Give it a rest, sweetie, huh? If YouTube lets me get that whole scene off, they pussy. Who, oh, me? No, I wasn't even talking. Oh my gosh, you think I'm in love with you. <laughs> Gotcha, you little bunny. Aw, oh, you look malnourished. Okay, so Lore is the jock. She's tough and confident. But you know, one thing I like about her is that they give her more to do than just being the one that plays sports the best. One of her ongoing story things is that she wants to impress this Rick and Morty background character ass nigga, Thomas, who she has a crush on throughout the whole show. Man, the longer the show goes on, the stupider lore gets this is like some homer simpson shit i didn't even notice it until season three by then it's damn near every other line of dialogue of hers just proving that she doesn't pay attention to anything anyone's saying 
She reminds me a lot of you guys. Well, since I'm gonna be an actor, I thought you were gonna be a poet. That was last week. Anyway, the point is, other people's families do stuff weird. Wow, Laura has a point. Where? Laura has anywhere between 12 and 16 brothers. I'm saying it that way because one of the running jokes in this show is that there's so many of them niggas that Laura doesn't even know how many she has. As a 15 year old, okay, in my first video on this show, I made a joke about how much sex the parents had to have in order for that to be an outcome. Because it had to be a lot. But as a 23 year old with bills, all I can think about is how long it's gonna take to pass the phone around for Uber Eats. And how I ain't paying for the shit. Yo, Unc, you got this one? Whoa, 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 whoa. Speaking of running gags, man, this show thrives on those. Whether it be the wild shit, Tino's mom cooks for dinner, the changing themes of the pizza spot every episode, whatever. If I had a nickel for every joke they make about Carver cross-dressing, I'd have two nickels. Which, you know, isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? Uh, I didn't buy this. This for my sister? I hate wearing contact lenses. My eyes get all buggery. Carve, how come you had all these clothes in your closet? Halloween costume. This piece of spot shit is hilarious, son. Every time I see one that I think is the best one, they do a different one that's even more hilarious. Like this discount piece of shit from the second episode of season three is wild funny. Got this shit looking like that part in Thugaboo. I bring up Thugaboo later in this too, that's kind of like, that's just what happens when you take your notes over the course of a week. Hey, those are mine. Hey, you should review. I already did. Attention shoppers. All designer hot dogs have been marked down 75%. Uh oh. Ah! There's this other one that they do in season three that's dead ass just called Where's the Pizza? And bro just makes niggas look for it. This shit is hilarious, man. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know how they kept coming up with these, and there's so many of them too. Leave it to me, and I would have opted out in season two and just did shit like welfare pizza. The cheese doesn't melt. Whatever. Carver, I need you. Ah! Alright, so this one made me laugh. Man, of course I got more notes about Carver than anyone else, man. I'm about to deactivate my shit, son. Out of all the characters, I think Carver might actually be the worst person. He's not a bad dude or anything. He's just really conceited, really selfish, overly confident. But it's not, it's not turned up to 11, making you wonder why everyone would still be friends with him. He definitely has his good traits and is still there for his friends. He's just kinda stupid sometimes you say that like it's a good thing i don't think there's anything deeper here they didn't make him this way just because he's black or anything that's just kind of who he is i definitely had a blast watching him in these i actually think he might be my favorite character that phil lamar voices and yes above static fuck golly y'all be on bro dick so much y'all might as well just start paying rent hey and yeah okay so like while we're doing this can more black women uh, get into voice acting, please? Why the fuck does Cree Summer play three of Carver's four family members? <laughs> what type of shit is this old one man show face at? Oh, come on, Carver. Penny's been babysitting Todd for years now. Yeah. Yeah, I like having fun with Carver. I don't know. I, I thought that this nigga invented the little sponge uh, hairdo that, like, all the kids born around the first SpongeBob movie have on their heads, but. Apparently, uh, they're dreads. Tough talk for someone who's gonna be combing putting out of his hair tomorrow night. You can't comb dreads. <laughs> this nigga Carver be trying so hard to be cool with them little H and M ass white kids. Do what you want, my nigga. You know what I mean? Like, just you do you. Just uh, make sure you don't let them buy you a hoodie. You know what I mean? Boo! Carver is a lot like uh Gerald from Hey Arnold, where he thinks he's really cool and just like Gerald. I think he kind of succeeds. This nigga got swag, man. And make sure to let you know that he's the one with the fashion sense. There's episodes based around that. He definitely got the best drip out of all four of them. Lore is probably second. Dude, enough with the vows already. Cartoon characters are hilarious when they're dressed like me, son, I tell you. Oh my gosh, Thompson Overman just asked you to hang. You are so lucky. Like, so lucky. He's such a hunk. Like, so hunky. This is how I be when y'all be treating me like a piece of meat in the comments. 
Oh my gosh, does anybody else like low-key have a crush on him? Your voice is so soothing. You're so funny. Fuck me. If you didn't notice by now, these cartoon characters do not wear the same outfit every day like normal cartoon characters do. This one operates kind of like Ginger uh, in terms of fits. Every season, each character has a rotating set of fits that change between episodes, so they aren't wearing the same thing every time. But here, I think it's really clever because every episode takes place over the course of three days. So the different fits each day helps the passage of time. Even though there's already a title card, it helps you tell that a scene takes place on a different day. I think that shit is so dope, man. That's a detail I wouldn't even have thought to add. Tino's mom, though, she definitely, uh, changes fits a little less often. I feel like they could have given her a different fit or two since she's pretty much in every episode, but, but, you know, honestly, it's probably expensive enough to do this with the kids. It's definitely still an achievement. Laura's worst fit? Gotta be this goofy shit right here, yo. Damn, you take this bullshit off, sis. Motherfucking... Easter Beagle ass nigga, fruit by the foot built ass, Chibig, here's my rock out, we can shake him head ass nigga. No, I'm trying to figure this out, so how, how the fuck are you giving Teen Titans Go on the top and Steve Irwin on the bottom? Wait, okay, uh, hang on, let's look at one of Tish's fits. Hmm. It's giving... Segway. <laughs> Alright, I'm ready. This is gonna be worth it, Carver. Not many people can say that. Alright. That's all four. I found all four. Uh, what, what do I win? More peanut specials. Ah, crap. Thoughts in the cullinin. Tish is probably the main character that I remember the least about, but she actually gets a lot more to do in, honestly, all four seasons than I remember as a kid. If I had to pick one that does the least, it might actually be lore, now that I think about it, but they do a good job spreading out these stories depending on the character. Yeah, so like, the show starts out about Tino, so a good chunk of the episodes are gonna just be on him early on, but they do a good job letting you know that all the other characters are just as important. Okay, so Tish is the brains. She's really smart, artistically inclined, you know, maybe, maybe just a little bit pretentious sometimes, but she's still a really great friend. She's a perfectionist, which makes her a little controlling. In some respects, that's one of the main traits of hers that they play around with throughout. Looking it up, Tish is of Greek and Ukrainian heritage. All the other kids are other races too. Tino's Italian, Laura's Scottish, Carver's, you know. I'm part robot. <laughs> but I feel like Tish and her family's heritage gets the most attention. Now, I have no idea if Tish's parents are any form of racial or regional stereotypes, and it is not my place to say. So I am going to keep my black ass mouth shut and mind my business. Shutting the fuck up is mad underrated, guys, I swear. What up, my homie boy? Tish's mama is in the outhouse. I am one sick fat fly illin'. Word? <laughs> this is what y'all act like I'll be sounding like when I be using slang. Excuse me, um, what dialect is that? Nigga. Okay, but what region? supremacy in everybody on this podcast's <laughs> house and it is my fault <laughs> First of all, man, this show is gorgeous. Look how often these characters move. It's damn near nonstop. Their body language game is crazy. They add a lot of nuances to the movement that they didn't have to, but it really makes these characters feel alive. Come on, I said order. Oh, right. Uh, we want a large pepperoni and four colas. Like, look at Laura here. They didn't like, they didn't have to make her move her hair out of her face, but they did, and it honestly looks rad. They incorporate these shadows on the characters too, starting really heavy in the second season. It's an extra mile they didn't have to go, but it looks good. One thing that's weird about the animation though is that sometimes I'm noticing that like the eye lines get messed up. Like Tino would be talking to us, but his pupils would be like off to like the edge of the screen. Or Carver will be talking to Laura, but he'll be like looking towards the ground. It's not really distracting until you notice it, so you're welcome for ruining the entire series for you. Which one of you 10 kids in this room are responsible for these defective sneakers? Principal Iverson, we're over here and there are only two of us. Wow! 
What show is that? Thugaboo. I haven't seen that thing in years. Hey, you should do a video on it. Already did. Cool. Will you ever do Static Shock? No. All right, but what about Rocket Power? Because I really want to oh, hear your thoughts. Oh my god. Like I'm going to go plan an intersection or something. Weekenders is fucking jokes, man. This show is so funny. I've like, I found myself dying laughing a few times, and it ain't even a drugs because the Molly ain't kick in yet. What? What? Maybe we could get plastic surgery to look like famous people. Yeah, famous people get invited to everything. Ooh, I want to be Tiger Woods. Uh, Tiger Woods' uh wife was white, right? Uh, I don't know. That that happened back when um. I got all my news from South Park. I love the way that is written in general, honestly. I know whenever I do these big series videos, there's usually a section where I play Eric B and Rock Kim and rant about a really ridiculous episode, which y'all love because y'all love to see a black man raise his blood pressure. But honestly, the worst the Weekenders gets is just kind of fine. Like, I don't think that there's any bad episodes. It's honestly pretty consistent. This isn't a brace face or a ginger. There isn't constant character growth or ongoing arcs, but stuff does happen and it does matter. In the season 2 finale, Tino gets a crush on this girl, Tasha, and in the season 3 opener, he name drops her. The new issue of Captain Dreadnought is out, Tasha will be at the comic book store, and I plan to accidentally run into her. I was so convinced that this joint with Tino's mom, Dayton, was just kind of a one-off, but her boyfriend just casually shows up a few episodes later. Stuff happens just kind of like in the background. And while I can't say that I like this approach better necessarily, I definitely appreciate the attention to detail in that regard. It rewards the audience for paying attention back in a time before niggas was dissecting every little detail on Twitter. I'll be blowing my shit, my nigga. Y'all don't even want to see my muted words. There's so many little details that come up sometimes, only like once a season, but they keep track of them shits. Like Carver says that he likes extra cheese on his pizza as like a one-off joke once, but they bring that shit up every once in a while. Stop! You're eating science! Well, science could use a little more cheese. And that's really cool. They didn't like, they didn't have to do that. It's not even like they said that it was his favorite food or anything. And this bit with Thomas and Lore rules. It's the last episode of the series to focus on how much she likes him. And he pretty much just gives her a recap. I'm flattered that you wanted to impress me, but we've been through this over and over. Remember when you tried the girly thing and then the brainy thing? Vaguely. One thing I like that they do is that they'll take one of the character's character traits and do an entire episode dissecting it. I really think that's a cool way to help develop these characters. Like, they do an episode about Carver not listening, and if you pay attention for most of the run, you'll see that he has a problem with that every once in a while. Or they make Tino really anxious and overthinky sometimes, so they do an episode about him not liking this about himself and depriving himself of all emotion. Which I identify with, I've actually tried this a few times because I just, I hate how anxious I get about everything. But I don't know. I. I think I've mastered not caring about what other people think. You don't think that sounds mean, do you? The real fun, too, is uh, when they play with character combos. What is Tish and Tino's relationship like? What is Carver and Laura's? Or Tino and Laura's? They do a better job at this than other shows I've covered, like Mike Gluenog or Brace Phase. We know these characters function great as a unit, but if you remove one of them, can they still be interesting? Do they still have a relationship? Are they still friends? By the end of the series, you're not wondering how they all feel about each other. Every corner of these relationships is explored. So the show started out as just Tino being the one talking to and addressing the audience, and they do like these little subversions every once in a while, it's cute. But by season three, boy, they just, they didn't give a fuck. Shit, the subversion now is when it's just Tino. In one of these, they literally started out by making all four of them talk to the audience. I do not remember them doing this, son. Like, not at all. And you know what happens then. Tish and I take pity on them and help them with their homework. Yeah, mostly by doing it for them. But that won't happen this time. We promise we are never going to make them come to our rescue again. No. I think the reason they started letting all the other kids talk to the audience instead of just Tino is because it was probably really difficult to write Tino talking to us about a lesson Carver or Tish learned. Like, it's easier and makes more sense for them to talk to us about the lesson that they learned instead of it coming from Tino, who sometimes might not even be around for their epiphany moment. I don't really uh understand how their universe works, but... uh. 
it's gotta be better than ours. One thing that this show does that a lot of other ones around this time did was make the boys really nervous to talk to the girls. I guess this is a universal thing, but like, I ain't start feeling this way until my 20s. Hey, okay, um, hey, uh, would you like to, um, I'm sorry, like, would you, uh, would you like to- Fuck me. This is one episode in the first season where Tino and Carver are really nervous about going to a boy-girl party. Man, these little niggas is hoes, son. You know how turnt we would have been to go to one of them shits back in sixth grade? Man, fam, we would have just- And you know, once everybody, like, calms down a little bit, you know what I mean? You just, like, you throw in one of them Trey Songz records from that time, but then you really just- All respectfully though, respectfully, respectfully, like no disrespect whatsoever. All oh, right, I'm uh, I'm uh, supposed to be uh talking about a cartoon or something. Sex. <laughs> they got this other episode right where this nigga Carver is scared to go on a date with a tall girl at a school because he's scared everyone will make fun of him. And I think this just might just be uh the difference between a boy and a man because if it was a tall woman at this big age, man, I would have clapped that. Nah, don't play the music. By season three, I kind of figured out what I really like that the show does and what I'm kind of indifferent on. I don't know if there's like anything that I don't like all the way, honestly. Like the plot lines where the characters have a crush or anything interpersonal, love those, man. Those are the best. Those are some of my like favorite ones. But I found myself a little less interested when I start an episode and it was just another sports joint. Like, all right, my nigga, we get it. Don't beef with your friends over competition and don't cheat on a white woman. Got it. Lord said she wanted to be Tiger Woods, yeah? I don't want to jump the gun. I'm kind of taking these notes in order as I watch. But I think this My Punky Valentine episode is my favorite episode of the entire series. So Tino gets a crush on this punk looking girl and his homies think that she's weird. They keep calling her weird, remember that. So they keep trying to get bro to have a crush on other people that they wouldn't mind hanging out with. Whole time, bro is switching his swag up and running around town trying to run into Tasha, the punk girl. Do you have any rub-on tattoos? No, they're all real. I mean for sale. All oh, right. Wait, what, what was the question? When every girl they try to set bro up with falls through, they, uh, they do this. And fam, okay, this is probably one of the sickest jokes in literally any Disney cartoon. There has to be someone he'd get a crush on. You know who we need? Jennifer Love Hewitt. Oh yeah, she'd be perfect. What do you think, Jennifer Love Hewitt? Can you help us out? Sure, why not? Fam. Wait a minute, hold on. So Tino even dubs Jennifer Love Hewitt, who was like a queen of the white people at one point, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really know what else I got going on over there besides Tony Hawk. So yeah, they feel bad for interfering in Tino's life, so. They look to find a way to apologize. Um, <clears throat> hi, can I go now? Sure. Here's a buck. Buy yourself something nice. Um, gosh, thanks. Tino gives up and goes to the arcade solo, and Tasha actually walks up for him, saying that she heard that he's a fan of his favorite comic book. Well, how did you find out that I like Those three weird guys told me. Not only is this episode hilarious, but it's really sweet. It's a great blend of all the great aspects of this show. There's a lot of other episodes that have this blend, but not all of them have these jokes with the White Queen. And you can call me Whitey. <laughs> I think not. Oh, can I say it? Yeah, why not? Later days. <laughs> I sound like such a dork. <laughs> Fam, they get so mad. Look at this nigga Carver, son. He about to put her in a chokehold. All right, one more. There's this one episode where everybody makes fun of Tino for crying out a movie in class. And it reminds me a lot of you bitch ass niggas. But, okay, I think the difference between me and Tino is I really beat niggas the fuck up. Yeah, go ahead, nah, go ahead. Comment all that tough shit if you want to. Just make sure to drop your address too. Because I'm pulling up and I'm smacking niggas uncle. I will put your play cousin in a chokehold. Don't let this little plush toy fool you. I know it's cute and everything, but I, was, I am I, from North I was playing. New Jersey. And I'm scared of me. I'm scared I'm gonna say something. <laughs> Bro, you gonna say something. 
Y'all been fucking with me for a long time. You know? So, uh... So uh, uh how how does the uh how does the show end? The weekend is another one that kind of has like one of those open endings just in case they wanted to come back and do more stories, but I do think that they do a great job wrapping up the series. The whole show we hear Tino's dad mentioned in passing, referencing the fact that he lives on the East Coast and that he's never been back to the hood since the divorce. Tino's gone to go visit him plenty of times, but we've never actually seen him. But this time, he comes to visit Tino. Tino vents that every time they chill together, his dad comes up with all of these elaborate plans to do like all this cool shit, but really, he just wants to spend some time with him solo. We then learn that Tino's dad actually does this because he's insecure and thinks Tino will find him boring. They work it out in this beautiful scene right here. Dad, I know you want to do all this stuff and see all these people, but I hardly ever get to see you and you always have stuff planned and I wish just for once you and me could do something by ourselves. Time to get on board, folks. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what to- Forget it. I was just being stupid. Tino. I th That's no big deal. Go ahead, talk to your friend. Wait, didn't I go to school with you? Sorry, you must have mistaken me for someone else. Carver, Lore, and Tish spent the entire episode working so they can buy tickets to this event, but they spend the money on Tino and his dad instead for the blimp ride. And I think the sweetest thing about this story is that they never tell Tino that they brought the tickets. He actually never finds out. They just let him enjoy it. Man, I, The Weeknd is, is a good show, man. It really is. It's really sweet really funny, really clever, and it understands that its true heart is the relationship of these four kids. Tino, Lore, Carver, and Tish care about each other, and you really understand that. They're all vastly different, but come together to create a really unique friendship. Look, I know you guys want this on Disney+, Plus, but it's actually one of the only Disney cartoons to have the complete series out on DVD, so I mean, that's always a cop. My favorite season might actually be the second season because it has the perfect balance of heart and comedy and my least favorite is probably the fourth one. It almost kind of feels like the show was running a little low on steam near the end. But listen, I had a blast with all of it. So don't judge me <laughs> if I watch it again. Shit, I know what I'm doing this weekend. I had to keep at least one line from the original review, son. Come on. So, um, in the middle of watching this show, I threw on my old review of the show that I did when I was a kid. I had to be like 15 at the time or something like that when I threw that together. And man, did that shit make me uncomfortable. Like I could barely stand to listen or pay attention to the screen. And the shit was only five minutes long. I didn't even disagree with a lot of what I was saying for the most part, son. It's just that shit was just kind of gross. But man, I don't know. I just kind of feel that way about a lot of my videos in general. All of those videos of mine that like y'all love, I hate them shit, son. I can barely watch anything that I didn't make this year. The very thought of certain videos literally makes my stomach turn. But I think I hate them because I'm not the person that I was anymore when I put those things together. I don't feel like they encapsulate my feelings, my emotions, just like, at least not anymore. And I guess in a way, revisiting The Weekenders was a uh, selfish experience because while I enjoyed the hell out of it and had a blast, once I ran the first review back, it became really growth motivated. I think it's cool though that every version of yourself has the power to change people's lives, right? Even even when you yourself aren't exactly feeling positive. That's a good motivator for why I only do videos on things that I like, stuff that I have a personal connection to, and why I push everyone to be kind to each other. The words you say have weight, 
And if that's the case, why not spread love? Listen, man, look, the, the guy who reviewed The Weekenders eight years ago isn't the same guy who's reviewing The Weekenders in 2021. This one has a plush. And maybe that's what grew me to revisiting The Weekenders, you know? Sort of as a way to stamp back and stamp my growth. A middle finger to the old, I guess. Ah, uh, I hate you. I'm better than you now, nigga. But, mm, okay, so I'm not who I am today in spite of that old stuff. I'm here because of it. So please be kind to each other and be kind to yourself. Encourage and embrace growth. Because, I don't know, just because I hate the stuff in the past doesn't mean that I have to stop. In fact, learning from the mistakes of the past just kind of makes the future a little more easier. A little more easier. A little more easy? <laughs> Whatever, who cares? Later days. Yo guys, snackage. You didn't ask what we wanted, Tino. All oh, right, like I don't know what you guys want. We've spent nearly every weekend together since first grade. We are synchronized. So whenever you want to be, I'll be here. Love you with you. Tino, you need to have balance in life. You work hard at school during the week, and I think on the weekend, having fun and hanging out with your friends are perfectly good goals. Out on the beauty of this sunset, I have to believe that the world is good. You know, at times like this, when we're all together and happy, I find myself thinking of robots. Yeah, why is that? Let's be clear whenever you're ready. I'll take you away from the floor. Zero. <laughs> Later days. <laughs> I want an episode. <laughs> 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 <laughs>